And welcome to the variation lesson video from Mr. Donovan's Algebra 2 classes at Clover Hill High School. Make sure you take some notes, watch this video as many times as you need to to get what is presented here, and fill out the Google form after you watch. All right, my friends, let's talk about variation. I want to pose this little situation to you. Let's suppose that you work at a job that pays you $8 an hour. Okay? Let's suppose that during a given week you work 10 hours where you're going to take home $80 in wages for the week. Hours worked is H in this situation. W is wages earned for the week. Pop up to 15 hours. 15 times 8 is going to give you $120. Pop up to 20 hours. 20 times 8, you're up to 160. You can see the relationship between H, hours worked, and W here. As H goes up, if you work more hours, W is going to go up. The wages you take home are going to increase as well. That makes sense, right? Well, in mathematical terms, um, wages represented by W and H represented by hours, we're going to say that W varies directly with H. And all that means is, all we're saying is, well, if um, H goes up, that's going to cause W to go up with it. If H goes down, that's going to cause W to go down with it. So um, both variables are either both increasing or both decreasing. We can express that with what we call our direct variation equation. And this applies to any two variables that vary directly. Any two variables that vary directly, we have W varying directly with H, so that's going to be W equals K times H, where K is a constant. Notice in the upper right-hand corner, we say that any letter except K uh, is a variable in this video. So K is constant. K never changes. K is something called our constant of proportionality. So K never changes. In a lot of problems, K is going to be some rate or some number relevant to the situation. In this case, our K is 8 because we make $8 an hour. Okay. So all we're saying here is that W varies directly with H. So that means we're going to write W equals k times h. We're going to multiply h by k. Same thing if I say um, just two other abstract variables. y varies directly with x. If I make that claim, then I'm going to write y equals kx. That is our direct variation equation. Let's talk about another kind of variation. We're going to call this inverse variation. And you can probably guess it's a little different based on the name. Let's say at your big adult job so far in the future, you get $200 as a Christmas bonus. But let's say every time you take a day off, that's $20 off the bonus. All right, so we'll put D representing um, days off and B the size of your Christmas bonus. So if you start at zero, um, you're going to have a $200 Christmas bonus. All right, no days off, you get the full thing. One day off, you're going to get $180, $20 off. Two days off, $40 off, 160 In this scenario, B varies inversely with D. Okay, and we write that with our inverse variation equation. The one big difference is the operation. We're going to write B equals K divided by D. All right, if a variable varies inversely with another variable, you write that variable with k divided by your second variable. So notice, notice with direct variation, we were multiplying. With inverse variation, we are dividing. That's the main difference between inverse and direct variation. And for two other variables, if we say y varies inversely with x. We're just going to write y equals k divided by x. That's what varying inversely means. y varies inversely with x means y is always equal to some constant k divided by x. Y varies directly with x means y equals some constant k times x. So the, so the relationship shown here is inverse. One variable goes up, the other goes down. For direct, we had them both going up or both going down, one or the other. So how do we apply these? Let's look at some example questions. You're going to be asked 
two main kinds of problems, either dealing with an equation directly or they might ask you to find the constant of proportionality. So let's look at this question. In which of the following is z directly proportional to x and inversely proportional to the square of y? All right, so let's write this out and see if it matches any of our answer choices. We know that z is directly proportional to x. So z varies directly with x. So that gives us z equals kx, right? That's what direct variation means. We know this is true. But it also varies inversely with the square of y. All right, so not only do we need to multiply k by x, but we need to divide by the square of y. All right, so let's look at our equation here. Well, this one has x squared. That's wrong. We need y squared, not x squared. This one has y squared, but, oh, look, we're not dividing by y squared. So that's out. And d, none of them are squared. C works. Okay, we're multiplying k by x. If we were to multiply this in, we would get what we have written here. z equals k times x divided by y squared. So we're dividing k by y squared and we're multiplying it by x. So c is our answer. A lot of the questions you'll see, they'll just ask you this. They'll just ask you, um, write us an equation if in this situation, if this variable is varies directly with another variable and so on. They'll just ask you to write an equation like this. All right, so z is directly proportional to x. Directly proportional, that's another way to say varies. So z varies directly with x, z equals kx, we're multiplying, and inversely with the square of y, we're dividing. z equals k divided by y squared. We just happen to need to combine them into one big equation. All right, another example. Find the equation of variation if z varies jointly as x and y, and z equals 56 when x is 7 and y is 10. All right, so new word here, varying jointly. Okay, don't get thrown off by it, all that means Joint variation is direct variation with more than one variable. So we're still multiplying here because joint is direct, right? We're varying jointly. We're just happen to have more than one variable involved in the relationship here. So we know that if z varies jointly as x and y, it's varying directly with both. That's going to be z equals k times x times y. This is what a joint uh, variation equation looks like. We're just multiplying k by more than one variable. z equals kxy. In this case, though, they gave us values. They said that 56 is z equals, they didn't give us a k, times x is 7, y is 10. Okay, so 56 is 70k. All right, so it wants us to find k, because remember, k never changes. k is a constant, and stick it in that equation. All right, so if we divide on both sides by 70, we can find out that our constant of proportionality, k, is 56 over 70. All right, 56 over 70, and we can plug that in, and our equation of variation is going to be z equals 56 over 70 times x times y. So all we did is replace k with its value, 56 over 70. Remember, joint variation is direct variation with more than one variable. And I put the wrong word there, variable. More than one variable, OK? Next example. The number of days required to build a five-bedroom house varies inversely as the number of construction workers working in the house. If it takes 10 construction workers seven days to build a house, how long will it take five construction workers to build a house? All right, so now we actually have to apply our equation here. All right, I highly recommend that you use variables that make sense in terms of the problem. So number of days, let's use D for days. Days required varies inversely as the number of construction workers. So let's use W for workers. D equals KW. We're varying inversely. And that makes sense, right? If it's fewer people working, it's going to take more days to build the house. So this makes sense. This is our um, equation of variation written in variables. D varies inversely with W. So we're dividing K by W. 
We know that it takes seven days if we have 10 construction workers. All right, so we can find that our constant of proportionality K, if we multiply by 10 on both sides, we can figure out that K is 70. So we can plug 70 back in over here. D, number of days, is 70 divided by the number of workers. So we have five construction workers to build this house. So 70 divided by 5, that's going to equal 14 days to build a house. All right, so our answer is 14 days. All right, but notice we had to write our equation of variation. We had to find our constant of proportionality, which enabled us to plug in another um, value and get the information that we desired. So our equation of variation is D equals K divided by W, since D varies inversely with W. Okay, then we solved for K. We plugged in the information that they gave us and solved for K, found out that our pro constant of proportionality was 70. And then we could use that in our equation of variation to figure out how long it would take five construction workers for this project. All right, another application. Ohm's law states that voltage varies jointly as the resistance R and current I. I know that's a weird variable, but current is measured, uh, I think the variable they use in physics is I. If K represents the constant of proportionality, what is the formula for this relationship? Well, we just have to write our equation using the variables that they give us. So voltage V varies jointly. Remember, jointly is direct variation with more than one variable. So we are multiplying. So we're going to have V equals K as our constant of proportionality times I times R. And that's your answer. That's all they asked for. What's the formula of the relationship? Well, if they vary jointly, we're going to have V equals K times I times R. We're varying jointly, meaning varying directly with more than one. So we're going to multiply here. Okay, pretty simple, right? All right, this one's a little bit of a, bit of a longy, this last example. All right, it has a bunch of parts, but I think it'll help you walk through each of the kinds of problems you might see. The cost of labor varies jointly, so we're varying jointly again, um, by the number of employees on the job and the number of days they spend working. It costs 4400 so let's write that, 4400 for eight employees to work five days. All right, so we're going to have um, total cost equals K times number of employees times number of days worked. So I'm just putting in those values here, and we're using the information. So what is the constant of variation? That's just another name for K, constant of proportionality, uh, constant of variation, same thing. They mean K. They want K. So um, 8 times 5 is 40. So we have that 4,400 equals 40K. So if we divide by 40 on both sides, that's going to give us a K of 110. So our constant of variation is K equals 110. That's another thing they could ask you for, constant of variation. Let Z represent the total cost of hiring X employees for Y days. Write the joint variation equation. Here again, that's just writing the equation showing the relationship. Z equals K times X times Y. Joint variation means direct variation with more than one variable. Okay? So that's our uh, equation of variation with variables. How much would it cost to hire nine employees to work for three days? Okay? Um, I'm going to use the equation I just wrote. All right? Um, we found that K was 110, so I'm going to move down here and work. I'm going to say um, we want Z, we want the cost, Z is the total cost, K is 110, X employees, that's going to be 9, times 3, Y is 3, that's 3 days. Okay, so if we multiply all that up, we get Z is 2970. Alright, so all we did was use the information that we were given there, we plugged it into our equation, and we got that the total cost Z was $2,970. If the total cost of labor for a five-day work week cannot exceed $6,000, what is the maximum number of employees that can be hired? All right, well, if our cost is 
$6,000. Our total cost is $6,000. Well, we know that's going to equal our constant of variation, 110, times a five-day work week is what we're looking at. All right, so we don't know the number of employees yet. Times five, Y, is our, is our five-day work week. All right, so 6,000 is going to be 550 times x. All right. So if you put this in the calculator, let's over to our, head over to our calculator over here. 6,000 divided by 550 is 120 over 11. All right. So we're going to get a fraction here. It's about 10.9. All right. So $6,000 in our budget is going to give us 10.9 workers. About. So obviously we can't hire nine tenths of a person. So the maximum number of employees that can be hired is ten. And that's our last example, folks. Thanks for watching. Um, watch again if you need to, um, just to let the concept sink in. Um, it's pretty straightforward once you get the hang of it. It's not much more than finding that equation of variation. Again, just use whatever direct or inverse or joint variation means uh, to write that uh, write out that equation. Um, and then if they give you information, use it to uh, glean even more information for a solution to a problem. Thanks again for watching. Don't forget to fill out that Google form.